Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you guys how to work with one texture to make it into a 3D asset. So right now these are paper thin walls, right? So we have one sided geometry. It's super efficient because it's just one sided geometry. However, if we wanted to make a labyrinth or something like that, we don't have double sided faces. So it could be a bit of an issue if we wanted to build in walls that actually feel uh, that we could walk around an edge of it. So if we were to walk around this edge, that's no big deal because we actually have another piece there. But how can we fix that to make it a three-dimensional object rather than just a, like a one-sided wall? So one of the ways that we could do that, I'm gonna duplicate this and add it to a new layer so we can see this. Let me hide everything else and bring that to home. One of the ways we could do this is to duplicate and move this over so I got it in a one space so it's a, a size of one for the scale and I'm gonna rotate this 180 degrees and um, just snap that there okay so you're gonna see that this can be done pretty quickly I'm gonna separate these mesh separate and I'm gonna bring that one over and I'm going to grab um, this one right here and cut that in half. So multi-cut, cut. Okay, so now if I delete that and I'm going to delete that, I've got these two pieces. Let me now combine those so I can work with that a little bit easier and snap my pivot again so it goes over there and let's rotate that again 90. all right so now that i have something like this i can take that and snap it to here and now i have a, a corner and i'm sure most of you already get where i'm going with this if i were to take all this now i'm gonna just duplicate that snap it over here and rotate that 180 degrees again and snap it over to here now I can keep this piece or I can get rid of it. Uh, I'm going to keep that because what I'm going to end up doing here, duplicate that and move that over here. So let's say that this is my first wall asset. So I could take this and do a uh, mesh combine on that. And again, depending on where you need to have this start, you want this all to kind of snap, snap modularly. If this is my um, wall, we want this maybe to be in the center this time instead of it being on this point. So that really depends on how we're trying to work. If we know that halfway point is going to be uh, what we're using for building this out, I'm just going to move this forward. And if I were to build something like this, this will be a corner piece. I'm going to duplicate that and let me hide that one. And I'm going to take these and delete them and I also let me just separate these is actually faster mesh separate grab those delete those and now I have a modular piece that I can do mesh combine again and I have this piece so again D snap down so I'm doing a grid snap grid snap all right and now we snap that over to here control shift H to bring that back that last one. Now I have one wall that I can duplicate over and over again. And I have a corner piece. So in case of people needed to walk around that. Now I don't have tops. So that's an easy thing to fix as well. I'm actually going to just rip this one apart. So mesh separate, depending on how you want to, to handle this, I could do this the cheesy way where I'm just gonna rotate. So I'm gonna modify my pivot point and rotate that so it's 90. And I'm gonna cut that in half. So let's go in here and multi-cut, cut, get that out and snap that up. And now I have a top to the wall. It doesn't look very exciting. It could use some ornamentation on there to make it feel like it's not this this gross just ceiling piece. We can put cracks on it or something like that. But this is something that could be um, added to. So let's get rid of this one. 
And now let's just put this all in one. So mesh, well, let me first, uh, whoop. Duplicate, snap it. All right, so mesh, combine, and what the heck am I doing today? All right, and then uh, let me mesh, combine that one. So now I can call this one um, corner wall. I'll call that mid wall. And now we can just go ahead and duplicate pieces around and it's got dimensionality to it. I, again, I would put maybe wood across the top of this or something, but for the sake of trying to knock out a tutorial and close to no time, um, not doing that. So let me do 180 on this one. And now I have an entire wall that people could walk around. So super fast to do that. And we can take all that and duplicate it, rotate it around. All right. Okay, for this, I'm going to take a texture that I have already created from a previous year. And this is provided for you guys already. It was that little well video. I'll make sure you guys have access to that again. With this, I want to make this feel like it has a corner. And that's the same idea. We can um, create a a side to this. And if we know that this is going to repeat like this, um, there's a couple different ways that we could do this. So I'm going to take this part right here. And let's say if I do a multi cut down the middle, take that and then do a uh, insert add loop so I'm gonna go into edge loop and I'm gonna change this to multiple to two and where the heck is my oh that's why I'm used to using the other one I'm just gonna back that up not use multi-cut just insert edge loop and it did this all right what this did for me is it made two little pieces here. And if I move this so I can kind of look at it a little bit better, um, I'm going to use this to hopefully get myself a end cap. And the way to do that, I'm going to move this forward. I know I got distortion. I don't care at the moment. Um, and I'm going to take my side and snap that over. And so I want to make sure this is lined up. So I'm going to hold the, down the V key so it snaps with the vert. Whoa, not smooth, but V to snap. I'm going to go on the top view to do this. And okay, there you go. There we go. And I just want to make sure I go. All right. So I've got this. Does it look pretty? Not yet. I also need to make sure my edges, mesh display, harden edge. I've got this thing. If I rotate that over, and I'm gonna make sure that my pivot point is somewhere that makes sense. So rotate this over, and that's gonna be negative 90, and snap that over here. Okay. Now that I have something like this, I'm going to take this one. Let me actually make sure my pivot point on this one is okay. So that's there. Uh, I want to make sure these line up. So I'm going to hold on the D or I'm going to press the D key and change my pivot to this one to there. That way they can line up. Now I don't have a seam because I cut down the middle. I have stretching here. So what I'm going to do is make this a half. So just move that in by half. And then I'm going to duplicate this one, rotate it around 90, nope, 180, and there we go. Snap that over there. Now, check that out. 
So I'm going to take both of these actually, and because they're they're hard edged, I don't really like that. I'm going to go to bevel, and oh snap! Look at that. It goes all the way around. So that makes it a lot better to look at. Now, harden edge probably don't need that anymore. So let's do mesh display soften edge on that. Look at this. So I've taken I took in, ugh. I've taken one texture, and I added an uh, insert edge loop. So I'll do that one more time. So I'm going to take this. So if I I'm going to just snap this somewhere like this. Mesh tools, insert edge loop. And I have that thing set up as setting in two. So click right down the middle. And we want to grab these, back it up, and snap it behind there. So only the, the snap key for V. And I'm going to go in front of this right here so it can catch these vertices. So it's snapped to that one. I'm going to make sure that it did what it needed to do by going to top view. And all right. I'm going to line these up, so grid snap, and this is how we were able to make this. I'm going to put that over on the other side just so you guys can have um, both of them. And let's grab both of those again, so this one and that one, and we'll do a bevel. And we can reduce that bevel however we need to do this. We're going to also mesh displace, soften that edge, and again, grab the this with the D key, snap it, and change the pivot point and 90 okay we just do that now so look I got a seamless wall that goes all the way around and yet it is just something that was produced using our um, our uh, cheat here so that's pretty good what if we needed to make the wall look, look like it was collapsed? So there was a piece that's missing. Let's take something like this and I'm just going to use the um, multi-cut and I'm going to just start cutting. And to do these cuts, it's usually best so if I start maybe here let's say I'm gonna to go to edge mode oh I think I have a yep I have a vertice here that's why it wasn't working use multi cut and holding down control cut across here here so I'm going up each step of um, stone here and you'll see what I'm getting at in a second I need to basically break out some of this geometry and you'll see broken um, rocks like this in Breath of the Wild and some other games um, it's really an easy technique you'll if you notice you get close to the geometries it does have um, you can tell they were they were trying to clean it up as best as possible but it always has a little bit of a rough edge to it so um, this is something that we could use now where if we were to take another multi-cut, get rid of that one. Um, and I'm actually going to get rid of, uh, let's say, yeah, we'll, we'll get rid of that too. So, all right. So I have something like this and basically the idea is that we would have a uh, left and a right side of this. So you would do the same thing onto the other side. Then you would take these and then extrude forward to the thickness that we need this to be. Um, I'm going to go to my UVs, my UV editor, and with this, it's it's looking weird. Let's let's look at what exactly our geometry is, is showing me. So if I select just those, it's going across the entire piece. I need to shrink this down.
and let me turn this off because it's messing me up here. Shrink it down so we can get something to resemble one solid chunk. So we want it to be basically one brick that it's showing. Right now, not 100% like that there. We can go maybe, and we can sample different bricks too so it doesn't look all the same. But now we have something like this. So it looks like sort of the bricks are broken across that side. I'm gonna do that again to this side now. And this, and hold down shift and make another one. And I'm gonna snap that hopefully, yep, there we go. All right, so let's grab all the ones on here. So you notice I did that only with the, the top and now I'm doing the sides. And I'm gonna do this again now, right now it's also tilted. So if I use my UV editor and I transform those to rotate, let's go one, there we go. And I'm gonna scale that down. Let's use that guy as our piece. I'm gonna go to UV mode, grab those, move, whoop. Don't want those. This, and then grab that. Okay. So now that I have something like this, I can break this up. Um, I can, and also another thing to be aware of too. Um, when we do this, we want to go in a little bit more so the shadows aren't there. So I'm going to grab these again and just scale it down even more. Now it's more of like something like that. So if I were to grab these and just vary these on different pieces, I can start to make it feel like it's broken up in different pieces there. Um, and so that's how we can kind of break up this to feel like it's uh, broken um, stones. I'm also gonna do something like this. So this is a super low poly version of this. Um, You'll see this a lot more defined in, in games. I'm just trying to, to make a point with this right now. So um, break that up like that maybe. It's so got like broken wall right here. So kind of a cool way to do that. Um, some spots like right here, I should have just done, I'm gonna do an auto unwrap or camera based. So camera based and scale it down. I'm going to go so it feels like it makes sense for a size. There we go. And notice you have broken rock. Again, we can bevel the edge. Now I didn't um, merge these, so I'm going to have to do that. And I can duplicate that side over to the other side. So I can have two pieces. So let me do that too. So if I go with this, um, Let's say vertices, edit mesh, merge. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm just gonna quickly take these mesh extract. So I have this one and I'm going to mirror it. And by mirroring it, I want it to Where is my mirror control? Oh, okay, there we go. Nope, that's not the mirror control. I'm gonna do it the easier way. Edit, duplicate, special. Eh, you know what? Here's another way. Duplicate this and we want this to, actually, just leave it alone. Move it over here. I'm thinking too much. I'm gonna reverse my um, display. So reverse. All right, so you got both sides now. So mesh, combine, edit mesh, merge. And let's see if this can go and be added to the party here. So if we have these, and I know those are all working well, 
let's take that um this piece right here delete it duplicate this and bring it over so I need to go and change my pivot point to make sure that it's gonna lock with the other pieces let's go 180 and snap it over here and let's fix the thickness of it so we're gonna line this up as best as we can hold down the V key and snap and then there it is and what now I know there's a spot right here that's gonna mirror you're gonna have that because I took both sides of that we can fix that by adding some rubble or something like that you will see this in games every once in a while too so um, this again I'm trying to show you guys very quick and easy ways we'll offset some of these pieces so it doesn't feel completely the same but there's sort of a easy cheesy broken wall there is some um, ways to rotate or to make a, an end cap to brick walls and again to make the top of this you can just take this this entire thing and duplicate that across and I'll do that just in case if people are freaking out about not seeing that so I'm gonna go in here and do a mesh dis or UVs will adjust that so it is smaller much smaller of course I am not on today ah, let's see small and I'm gonna make it so it's about there and let's see if it would loop or at least kind of look like it's bricks that would go all the way across so when I bring this down some more okay and look at that you've got a cheesy little brick wall again tweak this the way you think it could look um, I would spend some more time on that to really make that match up the way it needs to uh, adding bevels across the top surface might be helpful too but there's some different ways to make brick walls okay one last little thing that I want to include here is how to add just a little bit of uh, an accent to maybe a wall um, and this is pretty easy to do we're just gonna do a multi-cut and I'm gonna go across here and around here here in here and I'm going to do it maybe right across here 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 and here so what this is going to do for me is I'm going to be able to get a um, just a little bit more definition on my model to do that if I take these and let's say I'm going to actually do this uh, in a kind of convoluted way but you'll see why I'm going to do this in a second. I'm going to prevent myself from having to UV unwrap anything. So I'm going to go here. Um, what this is going to do for me, so I've, I've got, let me go back here. So I've got the square. And what the square is, is going to be this block. Same thing with this one. What I want to do is be able to pull that block out just to get a little bit more detail. Now, if I use the extrude tool on that, it's going to wreck the UVs. It's going to make it look really weird. So instead, I'm going to take this and I'm going to use multi cut and cut like this. Now, that looks exactly the same, I know. So, what we're going to do is get rid of now these and these so I'm gonna to go to um, edit mesh delete edge and now I have this so I had all these other ones and I deleted those so if it doesn't make sense go back and watch it a couple times and you'll get to where I am here now if I pull this out I have a block that I can actually put some depth on yeah, it actually didn't need to have any UV unwrapping. If I do the opposite of that, so let's just do this. We'll compare and contrast here. Okay, I'll scale that a little bit. That looks okay at a certain point, and then all of a sudden you start to see the stretching. You don't really see that as bad right here, and that's because I have 
that technique applied. So I'm gonna do that one more time and show you that. So if I take this, multi-cut, and let's go around here, 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 and here. And I'm gonna bring in these um, diagonals. I think a lot of times when people see this too, they start to get overwhelmed. Like, how do you, how'd you learn that? Why did you do things like this? Well, to be honest with you, it's, it's something that, um, it goes with the territory of just being a digital artist. You, you learn through experimentation, you learn through messing up and you learn through playing. It's the same idea as being a kid. When you mess around with Play-Doh, you're just playing around with a hunk of clay. You don't know what you're doing, but after a while you start to realize if I push or pull on this, or if I move this form, it starts to look like something. That's the same thing with digital sculpting. All right, I'm gonna go and edit mesh, delete edge on this again. So now I have that shape again, pull that out. I can even scale that up too, so it looks like it's um same size there. And now it's it's got a little bit of stretch on it, but it's not it's not too bad. And it is three dimensional, so that's just an easy way to add accent bricks to your model. And again, is it efficient? Right now, it's not. Let's uh, turn off our shading so we actually look at what we're looking at. Um, I'm gonna go to wireframe on shaded so I can see this. This isn't max uh, utilizing um, a proper UV set at all, so, um, or not UVs, uh, vertices. So what I'm gonna do is clean this up um, by going to, um, let's see if we can, clean this. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add a multi-cut. Again, it might seem convoluted right away, I know. Um, but this is going to allow me to keep my UVs preserved. And I'm gonna go from here to there. And it's also gonna get rid of any um, additional geometry without producing N-gons. So um, I like that. So I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna get rid of this, and I don't need these. Again, this comes with practice. Um, edit mesh, delete edge, and I've still preserved that, but I've cut down a lot of geometries there. Um, and now I need to do the same thing with this one. So I'm gonna go from, let's say we've got that, that's good. I'm gonna go again right here to there. I know I missed that, so I need to make sure I'm right on that vertice. Okay, from there there and I know some of you are probably thinking well it's already so low poly do you have to be that crazy about your um, counts well sort of I'm gonna go to edit mesh delete edge again to get rid of those um, are you trying to get a job are you trying to show an art studio that you are able to optimize meshes are you able to squeeze the least amount of polygons out of a mesh? Um, you know, this is probably overkill in, in most engines. It, it absolutely is. Um, but if you can show that you can cut polygons down by doing these techniques, that's something that if you're going to be working on a mobile game, at a mobile game studio or something like that, these are tricks that you absolutely should know. Um, delete edge. We can also um, do a polygon reduce probably on this and then get rid of it that way as well. Oops, I can't get rid of these. So I'll get rid of those and I'm gonna get rid of these and I can get rid of these. And the other thing I, I always tell um, students too is to think about how um, I can also cut from here to there. Now I have this with the texture off you'll see in a second what this is going to do to it i'm not moving any vertices that's something i want you to know i'm only deleting edges and this is allowing me to um cutting and, and deleting edges this is allowing me to keep things optimized by doing this i can get rid of this shape here too by going 
like that. And then again, this comes to the territory of practicing. Did that. Remember the Y tool, that'll get me my cut. G tool, give me the operation of deleting my edges. So check that out. That's um a heck of a lot less polygons. Um, quite a bit less polygons. I could even like that if I want. So where we were to versus now, there's an end gone right there. Um, that's, that's awesome. We've really reduced this. Now let's bring back our textures. I didn't lose a thing. Everything is still where it was for me. So again, I'm not, I just realized, no, I need to keep that one for the edge flow there. So, um, I could actually get rid of one more. Do I enjoy this stuff? Yes. It's super nerdy. Um, but I, I love it. Okay. So look at that. I've got now this piece, which is ready to be duplicated over and over again. And it still has really good topology. And it, it repeats with those two doing that. Now you could do the opposite too. Um, if you felt that one looks like it should be going in more. Okay. Same idea. Let's push it in. So easy cheesy way to get some definition on a model without using massive resources. So there's, 